let us start the day with uh, some important definitions. Suppose we have x a p dimensional random vector uh, such that uh, we have expectation of x as the mean vector mu and uh, the covariance matrix of x to be denoted by sigma. We define the characteristic function characteristic function of x is defined as phi x t to be expectation of e to the power i t prime x where we have i to be square root of minus 1 and t a vector belonging to r to the power p. Right? Now, this is the joint uh, characteristic function of the components of x. So, it is the joint characteristic function for the random vector x. Now, given the information about uh, this particular joint characteristic function of the elements of x, one can actually get to the marginal characteristic functions of uh, the respective components that make up this particular random vector x, similar to what we had seen uh, in the last lecture for the moment generating function. Now, this characteristic function of course, uh, completely determines a multivariate distribution and um, the knowledge of this characteristic function about the multivariate random vector completely determines also uh, the characteristic function and hence the distribution of the respective components of x. Uh, sometimes a quantity which is uh, used to condense the information uh, about which is uh, present in this covariance matrix sigma are the two following quantities. Uh, We'll just put it as definitions. So, suppose the covariance matrix of x is sigma, it is a p by p matrix. So, there are uh, unknown elements which are present in this p by p matrix, it is a symmetric matrix. So, the total number of unknown quantities in this particular matrix is p into p plus 1 by 2. Now, in order to summarize this, uh, the information that is present in the covariance matrix, the two following quantities are defined. The first is the total variance or total variation in x. So, the total variation in x is given by trace of this sigma matrix. So, it condenses the information that we get through the covariance matrix in terms of a single quantity which is given through the trace of this particular matrix. The second quantity which is of interest is what is referred to as the generalized variance. generalized variance of this random vector x and that is given by determinant of sigma. So, once again it summarizes or rather condenses the information that is present in this covariance matrix sigma in terms of two uh, single quantities either trace of sigma or determinant of sigma. The first one is called the total variation in x uh, as, as we will see later on that this total variation in x is a quantity of interest and which actually uh, is looked upon as preserving type of um, approach when we look at principal components analysis. Now, it should be noted that the two quantities that we have defined uh, just now the trace of sigma which is the total variation in x and the generalized variance of x are not sufficient to replace this uh, p by p matrix sigma. So, just put it as a note that uh, this trace of sigma and determinant of sigma can't actually replace this sigma. It's obvious actually if you look at uh, this uh, determinant and then the corresponding condensation in terms of trace of sigma and determinant of sigma. Uh, say for example, if you have a sigma matrix, suppose a sigma is a 2 by 2 matrix which has elements say 2, 3 on the diagonal, 1, 1 on the off diagonal. Uh, suppose this is the first sigma matrix, the covariance matrix. We can have another sigma matrix, which is also a 2 by 2 matrix, which has entries as 2, 3, the same entries on the diagonal, minus 1 and plus 1 on the two off diagonals. So, these are two different uh, covariance matrices. Uh, however, if we look at the total variation, that is, it is given through trace of sigma trace of sigma 1 will be equal to trace of sigma 2 and that is equal to the sum of the two diagonal elements that is 5. We can look at the 
determinant of the two covariance matrices sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, these two quantities would be 2 into 3 minus 1. So, that is equal to 5 as well. right? So, the total variation that is there in this sigma 1 and sigma 2 are both equal to 5. The generalized variance of the underlying random vector x which is given through this sigma 1 and sigma 2 both of them are also equal to 5. So, they have the both of these two covariance matrices have the same measures as far as total variation and the generalized variance of the associated random vector is concerned. However, the two covariance matrices themselves are quite uh, are clearly different. Right? So, these two quantities are not enough actually to replace the covariance matrix as such. However, the condensation that uh, one gets is of interest at times. Now, let us move into an important concept which is a random sampling for multivariate distributions or rather random sampling from multivariate distributions. Now, random sampling from multivariate distribution what is the what is basically the need of uh, this random sampling. Suppose, we have a multivariate multivariable population. Suppose, we have a multivariable population with unknown mean vector as mu which is p by 1 and unknown covariance matrix as sigma. Since for all practical purposes when we are considering a multivariate uh, population these two quantities mu the mean vector and the covariance matrix sigma are unknown. So, the number of unknown quantities the parameters which are uh, actually uh, present in that particular population are the following. So, this mean vector will lead us to p unknown quantities because it is a p dimensional vector. So, p unknown quantities and when we look at the sigma matrix which is a p by p matrix this is a symmetric matrix it is a covariance matrix. So, hence it is a symmetric matrix and hence the total number of unknown quantities which are present in this sigma matrix are p into p plus 1 by 2. So, the total number of unknown quantities which are present in this mu vector and the covariance matrix are p plus p into p plus 1 by 2. Right. So, in order to have inference about these unknown quantities and to have some estimators corresponding to the mean vector mu and the covariance matrix sigma what is done is to go for random sampling from that particular population. Now, let us denote by the following quantities let x 1 vector, x 2 vector, x n vector be a random sample. from the multivariate population so if we have that then on the basis of this n random samples uh, now each of these xi's xi vectors are p by 1 because that's basically the random sample drawn from the p variate uh, multivariate population and hence in order to have the inference about the mean vector mu and the covariance matrix uh, sigma we will be using this particular set of random sample. Now, let us denote my capital X the random sample matrix the random sample matrix which is a p by n matrix is basically comprising of the following vectors. So, where this x 1 vector which is the first random sample 2 up to x n vector which is the nth random sample. So, we have this p by n random matrix which is actually having this entire random sample of dimension n. Now, this can alternatively be written in terms of the following. So, let us write this as y 1 prime y 2 prime 
and y p prime, where these quantities are having the following interpretation. So, we have this x j vector is basically the jth observation vector. We have n such observations, so j equal to 1 to up to n, where this x j vector is given by the following that this is say x 1 j x p j. So, each of these are p dimensional because that is the jth observation vector corresponding to this p dimensional vector uh, random vector. And similarly, this y i vector that we had uh, defined here that this is y 1 prime y 2 prime y n prime this y i prime is what is holding the observation corresponding to the ith variable. So, these are basically y 1 prime. So, corresponding to the ith row of that matrix. So, this would be x i 1 x i 2 x i n where this i now is from 1 to up to p. So, this basically is the structure of the data matrix where this y i prime is basically the ith row of the x matrix and x j is the jth column of the x matrix. Right. Now, in terms of uh, these vectors that we have defined uh, through the random sampling, uh, we will introduce uh, the two uh, important quantities which is the random mean vector, sample mean vector and the sample variance covariance matrix which would be used actually in order to have inference or rather uh, the inference about the unknown mean vector mu and the unknown covariance matrix that is sigma. Right. So, we will have this being defined which is the x bar matrix, uh, x bar vector rather. This is the sample mean vector. Uh, well, in order to have the same notation as this one, what we will denote these by capital X i's. So, let us uh, be consistent with this definition. So, you will have uh, capital X i's to denote the corresponding random variables and we will use small x i's to denote the observations. So, x capital X bar vector is the sample mean vector and it is given by the following. So, this is a p dimensional vector which holds x 1 bar, x 2 bar and the p th variables mean x p bar. So, this would be given by 1 upon n then the summation of all the observations corresponding to the first variable. So, that is x 1 j say this j is equal to 1 to up to n and the last element is 1 upon n summation j equal to 1 to n summation x p j. Right. So, these are the corresponding sample means of the respective variables in uh, the x vector component. Now, in terms of this observation vector, this can be written in the following way. So, we can take 1 upon n outside and then what we have here is this is basically y 1 prime multiplied by i which is of dimension n i n. So, it is a column vector of uh, dimension n with 1 as all the entries and the last one is what is corresponding to the all the variables or for the pth variable uh, all the observations corresponding to the pth variable where this uh, we will just complete this particular stuff here. So, that this in terms of the random matrix what we have is 1 upon n x times i n, where this i n is an n by 1 column vector, which has 1 as all its entries. So, this x bar which is the uh, sample mean vector, it is a random vector once again, because it is comprising of uh, the random variables that we have taken. So, the entries of that particular x vector are given by these, which in terms of the observation vectors that we had defined earlier, the p observation vectors. So, these basically are these observations vectors y i primes and 
that random uh, sample mean vector in terms of the random matrix that da the data matrix that we had defined it is 1 upon n x times i n. Now, let us uh, move on to uh, looking at now this x bar vector which is uh, the sample mean vector is what is going to be used uh, for inference uh, that is uh, based uh, that is uh, inference about the population mean vector which is unknown which is the mu quantity. Now, in order to look at the other unknown uh, quantity which is present which is uh, sigma the variance covariance matrix we introduce the sample variance covariance matrix So, the sample variance covariance matrix can have divisor either n uh, similar to the univariate setup can have a divisor as n can have a divisor n minus 1. Suppose we define that in terms of a divisor n then this is how the sample variance covariance matrix is going to look like. So, this sample co variance covariance matrix which is going to be based once again on the random samples that we have drawn it is a p by p random matrix which has the following entries. So, the 1 1 th element of that is going to be given by this x 1 j minus x 1 bar. Now, x 1 bar is what we have already defined through this random vector here the sample mean vector. So, that is what is going to be used here then the 1 2 th element is going to be given by this x 1 j minus x 1 bar this into x 2 j minus x 2 bar and the last entry here do not have enough space actually to write it. So, this would be given by this x 1 j minus x 1 bar that is multiplied by x p j minus x p bar right. So, this is the matrix here. Then uh, this is going to be a symmetric matrix. So, this we only need to write the upper triangle uh, upper triangle of this particular matrix the 2 2th element would be the one which is corresponding to the second variable this is x 2 j minus x 2 bar whole square. The last entry in this row would be x 2 j minus x 2 bar this into x p j minus x p bar j equal to 1 to n and the last diagonal entry the p p th element of this matrix would be j equal to 1 to up to n x p j minus x p bar whole square. Now, if you look carefully at this uh, sample variance covariance matrix that uh, we have listed out here it basically is holding say for example, this particular element this you can associate with the variance covariance uh, va uh, variance for the first component. So, we can denote that by S 1 1 say then 1 upon n of this quantity is what is the sample covariance between the first and the second variable. The last entry in the uh, first row here is the sample covariance between the first and the pth variable. So, this would be S 2 1 S 2 1 is just this element s 1 2 itself because this is the variance covariance matrix this is s 2 2 s 2 p and this would be the s p p element where the s i j is the i j th entry of this particular sample variance covariance matrix right. Now, if we define the sample variance covariance matrix uh, through divisor n minus 1 we will see later on that uh, one of them would be an unbiased estimator of the population covariance matrix sigma and the other is going to be associated with uh, the maximum likelihood estimator when we talk about random sampling from a multivariate normal distribution. So, one could have also defined this in terms of uh, uh, this uh, your s n minus 1 quantity. So, 
we can say that n times s n would be in such a situation will be given by n minus 1 as n minus 1, right? where the s n minus 1 matrix would be this matrix what we have with a divisor here as n minus 1. Right? Now, let us uh, try to write this particular sample variance covariance uh, matrix what we have defined uh, in terms of uh, the data matrix x that we had introduced. So, we will have this n minus 1 s n minus 1 is equal to n times s n. Now, that if we look at this particular matrix here, now this element here can be written in terms of summation following, I will just write it out here that this entry here we can write it as x 1 j square this minus n times x 1 bar square. So, all these entries similarly can be written like this say for example, the 1 2 th element here can be written as a summation x 1 j x 2 j minus n times x 1 bar into x 2 bar. So, keeping that in mind we can write this particular matrix in two parts the first part will hold the sum of squares and the cross products. So, we can write that as x 1 j square this j equal to 1 to n the second entry we will just have the first quantity which I had said x 1 j x 2 j the last entry here is summation from j equal to 1 to n x 1 j into x p j this is going to be x 2 j square j equal to 1 to n and the last entry here similarly would be j equal to 1 to n x 2 j x p j and the last entry p p th element of this matrix is just the sum of squares corresponding to the p th component. So, this is the first entry the first uh, block actually and then this minus n times the sum of squares entries which we will be getting like here n times x 1 bar will come here n times x 1 bar into x 2 bar will come here and similarly the other entries will follow. So, this can be written in terms of x 1 bar square the second entry will be x 1 bar x 2 bar the last entry in this first row would be x 1 bar x p bar x 2 bar square x 2 bar into x p bar and then the last diagonal entry would be x p bar square. Right. So, once we have written it in this particular form it is easy to realize that the first matrix that we have written here in terms of the data matrix that we had introduced that x it is just x x transpose right uh, the x matrix we had defined here uh, which was uh, uh, well we can actually we had uh, uh, written this as this matrix here let me see yeah this particular matrix here this basically is the x matrix so if we write the corresponding entries here x1 vector the first component so it will have the p components out there then this x n will have once again the p components of that nth observation vector and then this matrix p by p would actually lead us to uh, the product x x transpose which should now be having the diagonal entries as the sum of squares of the respective components and the off diagonal entries will hold the products. Now, this particular uh, matrix block here can similarly be written in terms of the x bar vector. So, this is x bar vector that multiplied by this x bar vectors transpose. What is x bar vector? x bar vector is what we have defined here as the respective x bar components for the p uh, entries p, uh, p uh, elements. Now, we uh, from this particular form it is sometimes useful to reduce it to this particular uh, form. Now, this is not yet in terms of entirely the data matrix. Now, as we had seen that this x bar vector can be written in terms of the data matrix as x bar vector equal to 1 upon n x i n. So, we can use that same thing out here. So, it is 1 upon n 
x times i n and then the transpose of that particular vector. So, this can be written as x x transpose minus 1 upon n this 1 will get cancelled out. So, we will have 1 1 upon n remaining and then this is x i n then the transpose of this quantity. So, what we will be having is i n prime and x prime. So, we can rewrite this in a more compact form as x i n minus 1 upon n i n i n prime this multiplied by x transpose. So, this particular form what we have is what is now expressing this the sample variance covariance matrix with either the divisor n or the divisor n minus 1 in terms of the observed data matrix. Now, here i n of course, is an n by n identity matrix. So, this is what we get. Now, an alternate form of uh, this sample variance covariance matrix is also sometimes useful. We will just write that say n minus 1 s n minus 1 n times s n that what we have derived as x x transpose into x bar transpose. So, since this x vector uh, x matrix rather x matrix is of this particular form x x transpose can be given by the following that this is summation j equal to 1 to n x j x j transpose minus n times x bar x bar transpose. So, this can be written as following x j minus x bar vector into x j minus x bar transpose j equal to 1 to n. right? So, this form also we will today itself use this form in order to uh, derive an unbiased estimator for the population covariance matrix that is sigma. Now, similar to the population correlation matrix one can also define the sample correlation matrix. Say the sample correlation matrix say denoted by r would be say d half inverse times s, where s is either with the divisor s uh, n or n minus 1, this into d half to the power minus 1, where this d matrix is the diagonal matrix, which is holding the sample variances of the respective components p in number. Right. So, through this diagonal matrix, if we uh, look at pre and post multiplication using d half inverse. So, what we will be getting is the sample correlation matrix, where the i j th element will actually be the sample correlation uh, random variable uh, for the x i and x j component of this. Right. Now, let us look at a bit of geometric interpretation uh, for this random sampling. So, when we talk about this geometric interpretation, uh, we will look at two simple interpretations. Suppose, we look at these as observation vectors, let x 1, x 2, x n be n observation vectors. Now, from these uh, observation vectors, we had seen that one can also write this in terms of y i s. So, this y 1 vector, y 2 vector, y p vector, these would be observations corresponding to p variables. Now, if we look at the projection of any y i on 1, projection of say any y i vector 
on i n is going to be given by y i prime 1 divided by 1 prime 1 this multiplied by this one vector and what is this equal to this is the projection this is a projection vector which is the projection of y i on i n. So, there are p such vectors i equal to 1 2 up to p corresponding to each of these p vectors which now are holding all the observations corresponding to these variables. So, this is what is going to give us the sum of all the entries which we have corresponding to the i th variable and 1 prime 1 uh, this is i n I just drop this i n from all these places. So, uh, later on actually without loss of any uh, generality we will just drop this particular i n index we will say that it is um, a vector which is holding once and it is of that particular dimension confirming to the other vector. So, this is just the sum of all these observations and this is going to give us n. So, this is what we will be having is x i bar times i n. So, this basically is the vector which is of dimension n and has entries x i bar at all the places. So, that is basically the projection. So, this is the mean uh, mean uh, of the i th variable and this is the n dimensional vector and that is what has got the interpretation that it is just the projection of the y i vector uh, the i th vector uh, the vector corresponding to the i th variable or holding all the n observations on this i n vector and that is what is this. Now, let us also look at the following deviation vectors. Let us denote by say d i the deviation vector. Now, the deviation vector is the deviation which we are going to define as y i this minus x i bar times i right. So, this is what is going to hold the following quantities that we have x i 1 minus x i bar this is x i n the nth observation minus x i bar. So, this deviation vector is what is going to give us in each of the components the deviation of the respective observations corresponding to that i th variable. This is the first observation in the i th variable that minus the mean corresponding to all the n observations of that i th variable. So, these are th this is the deviation of the first observation from its mean from the mean corresponding to that variable and likewise we have all these n entries like this. Now, if we look at the square of the norm of this uh, deviation vector. So, if we just look at this d i prime d i what is that going to give us that is going to give us the sum of squares of these deviation quantities. So, this is going to be given by x i j minus x i bar square this j equal to 1 to n. So, what is this quantity? This quantity is n minus 1 times s i i. So, this is actually uh, if we have the deviation vectors uh, d i is being denoted uh, by uh, this deviation as we have discussed that uh, these are the deviations basically from the respective mean components. Then d i prime d i is nothing, but uh, the sum of squares of these L, uh, these entries in the deviation vector which is associated with uh, n minus 1 times s i i where s i i is the sample observed. Uh, variance component corresponding to the i th component. So, we have these deviation vectors p in numbers and hence uh, these also will be p in numbers. So, it is basically the norm square of these deviation vectors are associated with the sample variances of the respective components with the multiplier n minus 1 as uh, the divisor. Right. Now, similarly also what we can actually see that this d i prime d k which is the dot product of the deviation for the i th variable and the dot product for the k th variable. This would be the cross product j equal to 1 to n 
x i j minus x i bar. So, this is x i j minus x i bar into x k j minus x k bar right. And this is what this quantity which is the cross product between the deviation vectors for the ith variable and the kth variable. It is nothing but the covariance n minus 1 times s i k. So, where s i k is 1 upon n minus 1 of this product which is the covariance between the ith and the kth variable. Let us also now look at the angle between these two deviation vectors. Let us denote by theta i k, let theta i k be the angle between d i the deviation vector for the ith variable and d k the deviation vector corresponding to the kth variable. Then what we have is this cosine of this theta i k is going to be given by this which is d i prime d k this divided by d i prime d i this for the i th vector d i this into d k prime d k whole raised to the power half right. So, if we have these two vectors d i and d k then the cosine of the angle between the two vectors two deviation vectors is given by this and what is this equal to as we have seen that this d i prime d k is nothing but our n minus 1 times s i k the covariance that divided by now this d i prime d i as we had seen out here is n minus 1 times s i i. So, this comes down to n minus 1 this as s i i. So, that is coming from this and this d k prime d k is n minus 1 times s k k. So, this is this s k k k whole raised to the power half. So, what we see is that this n minus 1 factor cancels out and what we have as the cosine of the angle between these two deviation vectors is s i k divided by under root of s i i into s k k. That is the cosine of this angle theta i k is s i k that divided by s i i to s k k whole raised to the power half and what is that equal to that is just the correlation the sample correlation between the ith and the kth variable. So, this gives us a nice geometric interpretation uh, about uh, this uh, deviation vectors that are associated with this random sampling that the cosine of the angle between the two is nothing, but the correlation uh, between the two random variables i and k. Now, given this particular expression here we can say that if this theta i k the angle between the two deviation vector is 0. So, they are basically in the same direction. So, if this theta i k the angle between the two deviation vector is 0 then what we have this r i k is cosine of that angle 0 and hence this is equal to 1 that justifies actually our uh, intuition that if the two deviation vectors are in the same direction, then the correlation between the two random variables would be a perfect linear correlation. So, that the correlation is equal to 1. Now, if on the other hand the two are orthogonal if theta i k equal to pi by 2. So, we have the two deviation vectors uh, orthogonal to one another. then what is the value of the correlation coefficient between the two as we would expect the two are orthogonal. So, it is moving in um, orthogonal directions and hence the correlation would just be equal to 0. In the other extreme if they move in opposite direction not orthogonal move perfectly in opposite direction 
that is if the angle between the two deviation vectors is pi. So, the two vector are moving in completely different, but, but perfectly uh, uh, opposite direction. Then, what we have this r i k is what we expect that they are exactly in the opposite perfect negative correlation. So, this uh, gives us a nice uh, feeling about, uh, about verifying the intuition that what happens to the deviation vectors and the angle that they are making and the corresponding values of the measure of association between the two a, any two variables. So, this uh, cosine theta i k of course, is uh, for every pair uh, i and k taken from the set of possible p variables. Right. Now, uh, you remember that we had defined at the start that uh, two quantities which are associated with the covariance matrix sigma, the total variation in x given through the trace of sigma matrix and then the gen generalized variance of x given by the determinant of the sigma matrix. Similar to that, one can also define the sample quantities. So, the sample quantities would be the sample uh, total variance. one can define the sample total variation as trace of S matrix S either with the divisor n or with the divisor n minus 1 and the sample generalized variance as the determinant of S matrix and as we had uh, argued that the, these of course, gives us uh, compression of uh, the sample variance covariance matrix. However, these are not sufficient enough to replace S, because we can construct in a similar way to what we had seen for the sigma matrix that it is possible to have two different uh, sample covariance matrix giving us the same total sample variation and the sample generalized variance. Right. Now, we move on to one uh, important result regarding uh, this estimation procedure. Now, as we had seen that uh, we are we have the two following quantities which is the x bar vector which we are going to associate with this population mean vector which is mu and we have the sample uh, variance covariance matrix say with the divisor n minus 1. Now, that is what is going to be used in order to have inference about the population variance covariance matrix that is sigma. Now, we have the following result. Let me first state the result. So, let our x 1, x 2, x n be a random sample, be a random sample from a from a multivariate population with mean vector unknown as mu and covariance matrix as sigma, then the two quantities that we have defined as x bar and S n minus 1 has the following properties. Number 1, expectation of this x bar vector is going to be equal to the mean vector mu and covariance matrix of this x bar vector is going to be sigma by n and number 2 for the covariance matrix sample variance covariance matrix S n minus 1 expectation of S n minus 1 only is equal to sigma. In other words, we are trying to say that this x bar vector, the sample mean vector is an unbiased estimator of the population mean vector which is mu. The sample variance covariance matrix with a divisor n minus 1 is an unbiased estimator of the population variance covariance matrix that is sigma. Right? And the covariance matrix of this x bar vector is going to be given by sigma by n. This gives us uh, the feeling of generalization of the univariate uh, result what we have to the multivariate setup. We had of course, similar result when we uh, had univariate setup. 
let us quickly look into the proof of this particular result. Now, in order to prove this one, one is quite straightforward that expectation of this x bar is expectation of the respective components. So, it is expectation of 1 upon n x bar. Now, x bar is going to be given by this x i bar. So, it is all the all these observations i equal to 1 to n. Now, when we look at expectation of this, it is expectation operator comes inside and what we have is i equal to 1 to n expectation of these x i components and expect x x 1, x 2, x n are random sample from the same multivariate population, each having identical mean as mu and hence expectation of each of these x i's will be equal to mu. So, what we will have this as n times mu, this divided by n and hence that that is equal to mu. So, we have this first component of this result. We can also now look at the second result, which gives us the covariance of this x bar vector which by definition of the covariance matrix of any random vector would be given by x bar minus its expectation vector, which is mu as what we have derived that multiplied by the transpose of that same quantity. So, what we have this is the following that one can write this as 1 upon n summation i equal to 1 to n, then we will have this x i minus mu and then the transpose of the same quantity which is this i equal to 1 to n x i minus mu transpose. Now, what is this quantity equal to? This quantity would be equal to the following. Let us just uh, split this or rather write it term by term. So, the covariance matrix of this x bar vector is going to be given by expectation. Now, what is the first element? The first element is 1 upon n as we had seen it is a summation of those components. So, that it will hold these quantities. So, this is x 1 minus mu plus the last term is the nth random sample vector this. Now, this multiplied by the transpose of this transpose of this would be given by 1 upon n and then the transpose of the first entry which is x 1 minus mu transpose plus x n minus mu transpose. Right. Now, when we look at taking expectation term by term of each of these entries with these. Now, if we look at expectation of this term multiplied by this term the first term here, what we will be getting is just the covariance matrix of uh, this x which is sigma apart from this multiplier. Now, when we look at the cross product say this with the next element here. Now, remember that this x 1 vector x 2 x n they are random sample and hence they are independent. So, that we will have the expectation of the cross product of this with any of these here except the first entry would be 0, because we have x i x uh, any x i being independent of x j if i is not equal to j and hence the covariance matrix between the two would be equal to 0. So, that what we will be having is the following after we take expectation is 1 upon n square will be there and then we will have this when this is multiplied with each of these entries and then expectation being taken only the first element would give us sigma and all the rest of the elements will be 0. When we look at the second entry here, once again the same entry here will give us the sigma matrix and the rest of the entries will be zeros. So, we will have this n sigma components. So, these are n in numbers corresponding to these type of product uh, 1 being uh, 1 with 1, one uh, 2 with 2 and n with n all the cross product entries will be zeros because of independence of these components x 1 bar x x 1 x 2 and x n. So, this thus gets us down to 1 upon n square n times sigma matrix and that is nothing but this sigma by n matrix. Right. So, we have proved the first part of this particular result. Let us now move on to proving 
the second part of the result which establishes actually the unbiasedness element of uh, this covariance matrix. So, what we had seen uh, this is the second part of the result. So, what we now have is this n minus 1 s n minus 1 that is what we had seen earlier is x j minus x bar into x j minus x bar transpose this j equal to 1 2 up to n. Right. Now, we had also seen that this particular term is written equivalently in the form that this is j equal to 1 to n x j x j prime minus n times x bar x bar prime. Right. Now, we look at proving the result. So, if we now look at expectation of this n minus 1 s n minus 1 this is going to be given by expectation of this particular entire quantity. So, we take expectation term by term we will have this as expectation of x j x j prime this minus n times expectation of x bar x bar transpose. Let us give an equation number 1 to this because we will be requiring this later on. So, we need to find out those two quantities what those two ex, uh, expectations are expectation of x j x j prime and expectation of x bar x bar prime. So, what we realize is that expect uh, this covariance matrix of x j x j is a random sample drawn from that multivariate population. So, the covariance matrix of x j is nothing but sigma. So, that is equal to expectation of this x j minus mu into x j minus mu transpose and hence this is equal to as we had seen in the last lecture this is nothing but x j x j prime this minus mu mu prime and hence this would imply that expectation of x j x j prime which is a quantity that we would be requiring in order to evaluate that ex, uh, expression 1 is given by this. Right. Furthermore, if we recall the result that we had proved in the first part covariance matrix of x bar is sigma by n and that is equal to expectation of x bar minus mu its mean into x bar minus mu transpose right so by the same uh, approach what one can show is that this is expectation of x bar x bar prime this minus mu mu prime right so what we will be having is this also that expectation of x bar x bar prime is going to be equal to sigma by n this minus mu mu prime. So, this is one that we are going to use and this is one we are going to use. So, we will use this 1 and 2 or rather using 2 and 3 in 1 1 is what this particular expression. So, what we will be having is this that expectation of n minus 1 s n minus 1 that is a summation j equal to 1 to n then expectation of this particular quantity. So, that what we will be having here is sigma mu mu transpose this minus we have this as n times expectation of this quantity. So, that is sigma this is sigma by n this minus mu mu transpose right. So, if one simplifies this one, one this will cancel out. So, you will have 1 sigma from here you will have n minus 1 sigma from here and then this mu mu transpose term uh, just a minute this is a plus sign out here because if you take this expectation of x bar x bar prime to this side then you will have sigma by n plus mu mu prime. So, this is the plus sign out here not a minus sign. Then what we will be having here is just n minus 1 times sigma. So, this would imply that expectation of 
S n minus 1 is just going to be equal to sigma. So, this will imply that S n minus 1 is an unbiased estimator of the population variance covariance matrix that is sigma. Now, if on the other hand we take S n is not going to be an unbiased estimator of sigma, why? Simply because this n times S n uh, S n is n minus 1 times S n minus 1 and what we have proved is that expectation of S n minus 1 that multiplied by n minus 1. So, that would also be equal to expectation of n times S n that is equal to sigma and this would imply that uh, this was actually equal to n minus 1 times this sigma this is n minus 1 times sigma. So, this would imply that expectation of S n is going to be equal to n minus 1 by n times sigma and which is not equal to sigma. So, this proves that though S n minus 1 with the, uh, the sample variance covariance matrix with a divisor n minus 1 is an unbiased estimator of sigma. However, this S n is not an unbiased estimator of sigma. However, as n goes to infinity, uh, this will be an unbiased estimator and hence this S n will be an unbiased estimator in the limit.